Hey, race fans, it's race day. Top five with me, Frank Five. Shake and bake. That's what Talladega is all about. And today, we had it all. Three wide, four wide, side-by-side -side action. The big one and a former winner at this track broke a long-waited winless streak. Number one, Joey Logano. That's right, Joey Logano ends almost a year-long winless streak by capturing today's Geico 500 at Talladega, capturing it over Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Joey Logano, people, think about this. A year ago, Joey Logano won at Richmond, thinking, yeah, he's in the playoffs. But after that race, it was determined that he failed inspection, and that win, therefore, did not count towards the playoffs. And last year, after that, things went downhill for Joey Logano. Until, like, even though he missed the chase, he picked up the final few races of the season and picked up some consistency. This year, Joey Logano has been better than where he was a year ago. He's been top five, top consistent, has some chances of wins, and today, it all mattered capturing that win at Talladega. I mean, he had one of the best cars, if not the best car on the racetrack today. I mean, he was up front with the other Fords and a couple of the Toyotas, a couple of the Chevys, contending for the win. Joey Logano just proved today that he's one of the best restricted plate racers that we've got right now. And I'm happy for Joey Logano and all the Logano haters out there. Um, you know, zip the lip. Joey Logano's back, baby. Number two, Kurt Busch, who started outside pole today with teammate Kevin Harvick on the inside, pulled off a nice second place finish. And Kurt Busch has been trying to win Talladega for many years. I know he's won at Daytona, but he's been trying to win Talladega. This day, he came so close. But this race for Kurt Busch had a lot of interesting stuff. Before we even start this race, people, Kurt Busch had a problem with the radio. He couldn't hear, so they had to get in a helmet, had to get in their steering wheel, because it probably connects to, like, you know, having to listen to the radio. And you need your radio to listen to your spotter, Talladega. Like, in Talladega, Daytona, you need spotters. If you don't have them, you're screwed. Well, Kurt Busch today, you know, went uh, dodged all that. He had a speeding penalty on the first pit stop of the race when, you know, all the guys in the first stage, you know, did different tire strategies, pit strategies. He got caught for speeding, but he stayed in front of the Fords at the end of stage one and stayed in the lead lap. Got back up there, was a contender, and, you know, pulled off a second place finish. And I know Kurt Busch is still trying to win for the first time this season, coming off a mediocre uh, season last year, despite winning the Daytona 500. But I give a kudos for Kurt Busch. He probably... I think the driver of the day, other than Joey Logano, to go from all that stuff at the beginning of the race to pulling off a solid second place finish. Number three, Brad Keselowski, Logano's teammate, was also consistent today. I think, you know, he had the second best car to Joey Logano. But towards the end of the race, he was caught up in the big one when he got shuffled to the back. And, you know, that's the price you pay Talladega. You go from the front to the back to the back to the front. And, I mean, I, I really had Keselowski as one of the favorites to win this race. I had him as the favorite. I had him winning this race over probably Joey Logano or even finishing second behind Logano. But, unfortunately, he didn't get it. So, you know, there's always next time in the fall. But you got to move on to the next race now. So, uh, Brian will get to victory lane this year. I can promise you that. Number four, Paul Menard, the corporate team at a Penske, driving for the Wood Brothers, the team that Ryan Blaney won with a year ago at Pocono, won his first ever stage today, stage two. I mean, he had a really fast car. I thought he could have competed with Logano and Brad. But, like Brad Keselowski towards the end, he was caught up in the big one. And I felt bad for Menard because he had a good run. And he's been having a good season. Perhaps one of the best seasons of his career. I mean, since moving to RCR in 2011, his inaugural year, when he won the Breakyard 400. Paul's been consistent this year. And I hope he runs well. But, you know, these issues that you have today can hurt your points, standings, results. So, hopefully Menard will fix it going into next week. And number five, everybody talks about the big one. Well, the first part of this race, we were calm and collected, you know, kind of running double, triple file, a little bit of single file with the strategies, but not really too serious, which I applaud all the drivers for running a smart race for the first part of the race. And in the middle of the stage, we had a little bit of a wreck. They're talking about guys like Eric Jones, Jamie McMurray, and Martin Trucks Jr., Trevor Bain, um, you know, cost them, and Kyle Larson cost them a good finish. And then it caught... Coming down towards the end with about an average uh, 20 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson got a little bit loose when William Byron got to his back bumper. Didn't touch him, but they got loose, spun around. Um, Jimmy Johnson didn't get hit, but unfortunately guys like Keselowski, uh, Ryan Blaney, Paul Menard, uh, Austin Dillon, the Daytona 500 winner. Uh, even Bubba Wallace got some damage. Uh, Bubba finished, but the others, you know, and, and Jimmy finished, but the others, and so did Blaine, but the others didn't. A couple of others didn't finish, but, you know, that's when you come to Talladega. What can you do? The big one's going to happen anytime. If it didn't happen today, I would have been as shocked as even the people that went to the race or the people watching at home. So, I mean, we had the big one today, but at least it didn't take out the entire field, which is a blessing. 
Finally, uh, recap a couple things. Uh, Chase Elliott, my driver, third place finish today. The last few weeks, we've been getting better. I mean, ever since, you know, the bad finish at Bristol, we finished second at Richmond last week. We did a good job today. We qualified fifth, but we had to start in the back because apparently we had to change a tire. I think, you know, something we ran over, um, some debris during qualifying, um, and there was a good explanation for that because uh, the problem with Eric Armall's car. We, you know, we got up towards the front of the pack, went to the back, got a couple of penalties uh, as far as, uh, you know, tire violation and speeding during the uh, pit stops under yellow. But luckily, we were able to go through that adversity, stay in front of the big one, and we were able to pull up, went from fifth in the trioval all the way to finish third. Solid run for the nine car, solid points day, and uh, I'm looking forward to his run next weekend in Dover. And a couple of other things to talk about. Matt Kenseth is coming back to racing in a few weeks at Kansas. I'm happy for Matt Kenseth, but unfortunately, he's going to be taking Trevor Bain's ride. And I, for Bain fans, I feel sorry for you. I really don't think that's right. But it's happy to have Matt Kenseth back. And on a very sad note, um, some of you people might not know him, or if you watch the invocation um, opening ceremonies today in the invocation, um, uh, Saturday morning, yesterday morning, we lost um, 85-year-old, I mean, 83-year-old James Harvey Hilton and his son James Jr. in a morning crash. It wasn't a racing incident because he retired uh, five years ago. It, you know, he was involved in a huge crash um, this morning that took his life, and James Harvey Hilton has finished runner-up in the championship three times. One to David Pearson, two to Richard Petty way back in the day. Um, he had a win. At, he's had a win at Talladega, and he also won at Richmond. So, James Harvey, race and rest in peace. So, next weekend is Dover. And before you ask, yes, I am going to Dover this year. I'm going to the cup race on Sunday, and I will be at the truck race on Friday. So, I will be filming for you guys, doing the race recaps, and filming some stuff there for people who have never gone to Dover. I'll show you the experience. I'm excited, and I hope you all are. So next week's The Monster Mile. Who's going to conquer The Miles The Monster? We'll find out. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Congrats to Joel Legano. He's back, and I'll see you at The Monster Mile.